Hi, I'm Walt, and this is Delta Astrophotography. This video is actually a companion to another video I just made about how to blend a foreground with a Milky Way background. You can see that video right here. And if it's not there yet, that's just because I just put the video out. It should be up in the next five minutes. This video is going to be slightly different than my last Milky Way processing tutorial, just because there is no foreground in this photograph I'm going to edit. So that actually makes the process a little bit simpler when I'm not having to worry about a foreground. It's going to be a stack of maybe 30 uh, images taken with a star tracker and also a few darks. I've already stacked them in sequitur and I will have the TIFF file in the description below for you to download and practice along with me. That's enough talking. Let's get into the computer. All right, let's get started editing. As you can see, there's a little bit of a foreground, but not much. This is meant to have a foreground put in front of it. But for now, we're going to edit this as is. We'll start by hitting Control J on the keyboard. Command J if you have a Mac. That just made a duplicate layer over here because I always like to work from copies. Keep that original intact. Now, first thing you might see is it's pitch black here in the corners. That's more than just a little vignetting. That's, that's probably some kind of stacking artifact. But I do want to try to correct for vignetting before I do any kind of stretches. So we're going to go to Filter. Camera Raw Filter. I'm going to come down here to Detail. Sorry, not Detail. Um, optics. Alright, and we're going to just turn Vignette up a little bit. Try to get those corners nice and evened out. That should be enough right there. I'm going to click OK. Alright, let's do our first levels adjustment. I'm going to hit Control L, Command L on a Mac. I'm going to move this slider over to where it hits the peak of where most of my data is. There we go, it's just kind of darkening that sky a good bit. I'm not even gonna move it all the way over, that's too dark. I'm gonna keep it about right there. And click OK. Now I'm gonna do a curve stretch. So I'm gonna hit Control M, Command M on a Mac. I'm gonna click about right here and just pull up. Yeah. Bringing out lots of detail in that core. Click OK. I'm going to do one more levels adjustment by hitting Control L and bringing this in a bit more. Just a touch. You can see these problems in the top corner are pretty bad. That's just going to have to get cropped out later. All right, we're going to hit OK. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make a new layer. So Let's hit Control, Alt, Shift, and E all together on the keyboard. That's probably Command, Option, Shift, and E on a Mac. Basically takes everything we've done and creates a new layer on top. Now what I'm not liking about this photo right now is how blue it is over here in the bottom left. I want this to be as neutral as possible. It's blue and it's kind of bright because there's a bit of light pollution on the horizon. I do live in the country but unfortunately about 15 miles to the south this way there is a state penitentiary that puts out a lot of ugly light pollution i'm going to try to darken that a little bit i'm going to go up here to filter and camera raw filter if you're taking this from a really dark location like out in the desert or something you don't have to worry about this step but it's something i usually have to worry about all right we're going to go over here to this box called graduated filter and we're going to click on that I'm going to make sure that all the edits are set to their default positions right here. Restore local correction settings. Now everything's at default. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to drag up my filter to where it's just covering the area that I want to correct. And maybe a little above it, like right there. I'm going to bring my temperature up a little bit because I just think it's a little too blue. And bring the exposure down a touch saturation down just a touch. Maybe highlights down too. Yeah. There we go. It's still a little blue though. There we go. I'm going to click OK. That might be a little extreme, so I'm going to go to Opacity and bring it down a bit. There we go. All right, 
Let's create a new stamp layer like we did earlier. Control, Alt, Shift, and E all together. Let's just do another curve stretch, just a small one. Control M. This time I'm going to click this little finger here. I'm just going to kind of click in an area in the Milky Way that I want brought up. Click, drag up. There we go. Awesome. Hit OK. Do a levels adjustment by hitting Control M. I mean Control L. I don't know why I keep saying that. Control L for le levels. Bring that over just a touch. And we got some good contrast going on. Hit OK. Now, once again, I'm still just seeing too much blue. And over here, we've got some, a little bit of too much orange or reddish color. So let's get rid of that. I'm going to hit Control, Alt, Shift, and E to create a new layer. Now I'm going to go to Camera Raw Filter again. Filter at the top. Camera Raw Filter. And I'm going to come down to the Color Mixer. I'm just gonna bring out blue just take it out there we go I got rid of that blue and I don't like this over here so I'm gonna bring down the orange and you're probably looking at this photo right now like oh no you ruined it you ruined it Bring down a little red but I'm gonna bring it all back I promise I just wanted to get rid of some of that in these corner areas so it almost looks black and white at this point because the main colors in here were orange and red and brown so I'm gonna hit OK don't worry we haven't ruined the photo I'm gonna create a, a layer mask by coming down here at the bottom right here add layer mask alright you can see we got a layer mask right here make sure it's selected it should already be now I'm gonna come over here and make sure that this is set to black you can change it by hitting this right here from black to white it needs to be set to black. I'm going to select my brush tool. Not my dropper tool, but my brush tool. There we go. Make sure my opacity is around 50%. Yeah, that looks good. And you can change your brush size with the bracket keys. And I'm going to go ahead and paint the sky back in. Except for the areas that I did not like. And you might have to, like, not just paint like this, but you have to, like, click, 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 click a lot. So we're just going to start bringing all the color back. I just don't want to add, bring it back in this area and in this little corner here. So another way to do this is to come down here to our mask. I'm going to hit Alt and click on it. Now I can see where I'm painting so I can do a much better job here. Since the opacity is 50%, it's kind of blurry. The edges are a little blurry right here so it'll look a lot more natural. Just getting that sky painted back in. Yep, starting to look good. I want to get some more color back over here if it's not already there. I'll click my mask again. Yeah. I'll click the mask. Okay. Looking good. Definitely want the color back down here. Alright, now that I'm done with that, I'm going to hit Control, Alt, Shift, and E. Alright, we've got our new layer. Now I'm going to do some star reduction. Bring down some of these stars. There's just way too many of them. We're going to make that Milky Way pop. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So I can see the stars here. All right, I'm going to go to Select and Color Range. I'm going to choose Highlights. I'm just going to bring fuzziness up and range down to a lot. You can see a lot of the stars in here, but I don't want the core to be blown out, you know, like overly selected either, though. So try to find some kind of balance here. That looks good. I think that'll be all right. Yeah. I'm going to click OK. And you can see my stars are selected. Zoom in. 
But it's the whole star is not really selected. Just part of it. Just like the brightest part. So we need to expand that uh, selection by going to Select, Modify, Expand. I'm going to do it by three pixels. Now you can see the whole star is selected and the stars around it. Yep, looks good. Now we need to feather that so it'll be very natural looking when we shrink these stars. So select at the top, modify, feather. And we uh, expanded it by three pixels, so let's feather it by half that, 1.5. Okay, I'm gonna zoom back out. And I'm going to hit uh, Control H to hide uh, all those marching ants. Now we're gonna go to Filter, Other, Minimum. Make sure you're set to roundness down here. Now we can see our stars here. We don't really want halos. So let's just kind of set it to where they're smaller. I'm not seeing halos around there. And it's looking like 0.5 is about all I can do right now. So let's do that. Bam. Now you can really see all this dust in here, all this little dust lanes going out to Rofuyuki over here. Now if you think that's too much, you can always go over here to Opacity and bring back some stars. Dial that back down, maybe about 50%. I like it like that. All right, we're gonna move on. I'm gonna hit Control, Alt, Shift, and E to make a new layer. What I'm gonna do next is bring out a little bit of that hydrogen alpha in these nebulas, like the Lagoon Nebula here and the and the Eagle Nebula up here. And that's a pretty simple uh, operation. I'm just gonna go up here to select, color range again. We're gonna change it from highlights to sample colors. I'm gonna take my dropper. Also, I like to have this little color window open over here. If it's not open on yours, you can just go to window and color. It just lets me know that whatever I'm, I click my dropper on, that's what color I'm sampling. So yeah, kind of sampling the, the little pink area here. I can hit add, add another color, sample a little bit of this nebula over here. Okay, great. Now I'm going to move my fuzziness around to where I'm not selecting everything, just small areas. I don't want too much like that. We're just trying to get a little bit of that nebulosity in the core of the galaxy out. Click OK. Now you can see it's selected a lot of this little, little these little areas with some hydrogen alpha and stuff. So we're gonna go to layer. New adjustment layer, vibrance. Click OK. Just gonna bring up our vibrance and saturation. It's pretty subtle, subtle, but you can definitely see a lot more of the, the, uh, hey, where, why'd you do that? Go back over here. <laughs> Has a mind of its own. Yeah, we can see a lot of the kind of pinkish hydrogen alpha coming out right around here. And that's what I like to see. All right, new layer, control, alt, shift, and E. Now I'm going to do some more contrast in the core using dodging and burning. So let's come over here. Right here, it could look like the lollipop for the dodge tool, which lightens the brighter areas in your image. Or it could be like this little fist, the burn tool, which darkens the darker areas. We're going to start with dodge. Keep our exposure down to probably around 15%. Midtones is selected. I'm going to change my brush size with the bracket keys on the keyboard. I'm just going to click on some of the the lighter areas in the core, and it's just going to brighten them up a bit. Now to give it a little more contrast, we're going to change it to dodge, I mean burn, by right clicking it, click burn, and this one we, we want to even be less aggressive, maybe exposure of 10% and the range is set to shadows. And we're going to click the dark dust, so one click. 
I especially like it around here. I'd give that a couple of clicks. It really brings that dust out and it looks awesome. Over here, bring some of this dust out right around here. Love it, love it. All right, I'm gonna create a new layer, Control, Alt, Shift, and E. I should have done this earlier, but uh, it doesn't really matter when you do it, but I kind of want to bring out some more of the color of, in the core of the galaxy. So we're gonna do another vibrance adjustment for the core here. I'm gonna select color range, sampled colors, and I'm gonna click here in the core, and I'm gonna click here to add another color. I'm gonna click over here. Bring my fuzziness up. Just get that core selected. Click OK. All right. Got my core selected. I'm going to hit Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Vibrance. And bring the vibrance up just a touch. And this is going to go with a foreground later, so I, I'm going to not try to go over the top with it. I, I kind of want it to be as neutral as I can although this is not exactly neutral, but I think that looks good to me. You can look at before and after. Before, after, just a little bit of a, a color boost there. Now I'm gonna hit Control, Alt, Shift, and E. Got me a new layer. I can see that my uh, light pollution is starting to get kind of bad again. So I'm gonna try my best to bring that down a little bit by going to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. Coming up here and hitting graduated filter. Reset everything right here. Bring it up my filter. Just gonna bring in the exposure down just a touch. Highlights down a little bit. Shadows up. Maybe even bring the whites down a little bit. I'm gonna click OK. Yeah, looks a lot more balanced. Now, if I was putting a foreground on here, this is probably where I'd stop and I'd do my um, last adjustments with the foreground. But if you just want to um, stay with just a picture of the Milky Way, then one of the last steps I would do is come up here to filter Go to Camera Raw Filter again. Wait, before we do that again, let's create a new layer. Control, Alt, Shift, and E. Yeah, go back to Camera Raw Filter. Just click the Basic tab, and if you want to, you can bring the exposure up a little bit. A little contrast. Add some clarity, it just makes the uh, dust lanes pop even more, and some dehaze. Vibrance and saturation if you want, I wouldn't go wild with it <laughs> because it starts to look a little fake. And if you have any noise, you can go down to detail and mess with your noise reduction. Now I wouldn't go too far with it because you can see it makes it really soft. These have been stacked, so there's not a lot of noise in the first place. And then that would be it. That would be your uh, final photo right there. You, you just do that final camera raw filter adjustment to your tastes. So let's look at before and after. And there you have it. Okay, before we wrap things up, I just wanna talk about one thing. You may have noticed throughout the editing process that the sky was always kind of out of whack. Maybe the, the top of it was really dark while the, the bottom, the, the horizon was very bright and there's color gradients throughout. And I was going about it the hard way, trying to balance things. You know, there's actually a super easy way to balance the entire background sky color using um, a Photoshop plugin called RC Astro's Gradient Exterminator. And the only reason I did not use it is because the main purpose of this Milky Way edit is to use as a background for a Milky Way nightscape. And if I was to 
balance the background with RC Astro and then try to throw a foreground on there, it looks really, really fake. It's much more natural for me to see a lot of light pollution on the horizon and kind of have the sky different colors because that's what it looks like in real life. When I'm out there, I can, I can see so clear and it's so dark right above me, but right on that horizon, it, it's actually kind of tough to see anything. So if you'd like for me to show you how to use uh, Gradient Exterminator for the Milky Way, I'd love to make like a five minute uh, Gradient Exterminator short for Milky Way photos. So leave a comment below if you'd like to see that. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave you with what it would look like if you were to use Gradient Exterminator. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked this video, hit the like button. Please subscribe and well, stay spacey everybody. Good night.